It's safe to say I've got a bit of an obsession when it comes to metal rectangles. Me? Obsessed with you? Yes. That being said, I've been interested to see what all the Hall of Fame Switch hype is about ever since the Wooting came along and took the gaming side of the hobby by storm. So when I opened up my emails to see a, hey, you want to review our Hall Effect keyboard? My answer was obviously yes. As a company that I hadn't actually heard of before, I was a little skeptical to say the least. But after doing some digging and seeing that the creator had been posting on Reddit for a while, I was feeling a little more optimistic about the board. Fast forward a month and the Drunk Deer A87 was on my doorstep. Could it be a potential competitor to the Wooting 60HE? Let's find out together. Now, if you couldn't already tell, the board was sent out for review. But as with every other creator's video, the company has had no say in the video, nor have they seen it before you yourself watching it right now. So with that out of the way, let's go on with the video. From an unboxing perspective, we can see that the A... Uh, wait, M75? Oh, MS. Magnetic switch. I see. The box contains a manual, quick ref guide, spare keys for OS configuration, USB-C to USB-C cable with this cool USB-A adapter, a keycap puller, and of course the keyboard itself. If we look at the boring specs first, the board's a pretty standard looking ABS 75%, with an aluminium knob that features a number of different RGB modes that really shine, <laughs> pardon the pun, when paired with the black shine through caps, broken up by the on-brand colours for the left shift and enter key. Although front height and typing angle don't seem to be specified in the manual or on the website, the angle can be altered to a solid 10 degrees by the kick out feet on the bottom of the case. The ball features a sheet of foam in the bottom of the case for acoustics, as well as plate foam and an aluminium plate holding the switches into the PCBA. The switches themselves are the reason that I was so interested in this otherwise pretty standard looking pre-built keyboard in the first place. The Hall Effect switches along with the stabilizers apparently come pre-lubed, big plus in my eyes. And much like the Wooting have a variable actuation point that can be dialed in from 0.4mm to 3.6 straight from the board itself or through the third party software provided by Drunk Deer. If you don't know what a Hall Effect switch is, it functions differently to our standard MX switch, which utilizes a leaf contact for the actuation of the switch. Instead, these switches operate by, well, the Hall Effect. What this means in terms of the keyboard is that there is a magnet inside each of the switch stems. And when the key is pressed, movement is detected by the Hall Effect sensor on the PCBA below the switch. This is how these keyboards are able to operate with a variable actuation point compared to MX star switches that will have a set actuation distance dependent on the specification of the individual switch. Now this analog technology isn't brand new to this specific keyboard, as much as drunk deer branding might mislead you into thinking. And it's something that SteelSeries have been utilizing via their patented Omni point switches in their Apex line since 2019. The release of the Wooting 60HE really brought the technology to the forefront of the hobby again, albeit focused more on the gaming side, knocking competing gaming keyboards out of the water and has been praised as an all-round good keyboard for someone who doesn't care about the hobby and, well, just wants to be pretty good at Valorant. <laughs> but we are a keyboard channel, so let's see how this thing sounds straight out of the box. Hold on, we need the gaming desk map. Now from the get-go, I think this thing sounds okay out of the box. It's definitely on the louder but deeper end of the spectrum, at least I can put thock in my video title now, eh? <laughs> As I say, it's a pretty standard looking ABS 75 with a knob. The keycaps aren't the best quality and I personally don't like how they feel under the hand, but I think that one is probably down to preference. The one thing that stands out to me from an objective standpoint straight out of the gate is the spring ping in the switches. Now, while I take out all these switches to lube them, I didn't actually think the stabs were that bad. And to be fair to Drunk Deer, these are advertisers pre-lubed, and they are. But as I'm already taking out the switches, I might as well re -lube the stabilizers while I'm here. I don't want to mess around too much with the functionality of the Hall Effect switches, and they seem pretty smooth aside from the spring ping. So I'm just going to bag lube the springs with some Crytox 105. The board itself isn't held together by screws, and instead utilizes clips that hold the top and bottom case together. So to get these apart, you'll need to use a pry tool. This isn't recommended by Drunk Deer, but if you wanted to alter the sound signature a little bit more with some foam, then you could. If you wanted to go a little further with this, you could even change the keycaps. But given who the board is aimed at, I'm going to leave the caps and the stock foam and see if lubing the springs sorts out the sound profile. Now, let's give it another listen.
By looping the springs, you can hear that the rattle is 100% gone, and the stabs didn't even need that much TLC to be near perfect. Coming with some foam in the case, you get that standard deep and thocky sound that plastic cases are very much known for, but I'm pleased with how smooth the switches themselves are. And for my first time using switches like this, and for someone who daily drives linear switches, I actually really enjoyed using them. But let's go back to the board itself. The board in its functionality and therefore target audience is very comparable to the Wusing. Hell, even the websites look scarily similar. So let's have a look how these two boards compare from a spec standpoint. One of the biggest difference I'd like to talk about is the switches that each keyboard uses. The switches themselves differ in their manufacturer, the Lekka switches in the Wooting are manufactured by Gatron, a well-known name within the mechanical keyboard scene, whereas the Drunk Deer switches seem to be manufactured by Reisha. Reisha? Who, after doing some digging on the internet, are well known for producing optical switches for keyboards in China. If we look at the specs of the Wooting first, it offers the same configurable actuation as Drunk Deer, but the Drunk Deer only offers 9 options for this, starting from 0.4mm going up to 36 6 whereas the Wusing can be set to any point from 0.1mm to 4mm in 0 0.1 increments. Both boards offer this feature to be changed per key within their individual softwares, however one thing I do really like with the Drunk Deer's use of this though is the ability to change this straight from the board without the need to go into the third party software at all. It seems far easier and is definitely a quality of life addition that I think a lot of people will appreciate given the people's inherent hatred with third party softwares. From an input point of view, both boards boast extremely low latencies, with the Drunk Deer quoting 0.4 millisecond response time and the Wooting offering less than 1 millisecond response time. Both boards also offer the rapid trigger feature that is definitely one of the main selling points with these Hall Effect Switch keyboards. If you don't know how this works, in a regular mechanical keyboard to reactuate a switch, it first needs to fall back to its resting position. But with this feature, switches can be reactuated while on their upstroke, without needing to hit resting position before being reactuated. Now Drunk Deer calls this something a little bit different, but it works pretty much the same way. The never miss function allows you to set two active points through their third party software, with the first acting as the reset on the upstroke of the key press. Although I do think the Drunk Deer interface is a little less user friendly than Wootings, they've stated that this is the beta version and that updates will be coming, and so I'm keen to see how this will change in the near future. I know that Wootings Wootility can be accessed through the web, and this is something I'd definitely like to see from Drunk Deer going forward if they are to make any changes. One thing that seems to be huge in the Wooting community is the ability to mod the keyboard. Given that the PCB and switch arrangement is only held within a tray mount case design, people have put these in tofu cases, fiel cases, and added a multitude of different keycaps to really give the build some personalization and character. Completely swapping the case aside, the tray mount style allows new enthusiasts to delve into the world of mods, as opening up and closing the case isn't a very taxing job. The same can't be said for the Drunk Deer, being housed in a 75% form factor, the case requires pry tools to get into and as easily as the caps can be changed, getting into the board may not be as straightforward for newer enthusiasts as with the Wooting. That being said, it is doable and really isn't that difficult, but the depth of the modifications that you are able to do around the case design are far less than what the Wooting offers. Negative points out of the way, what do I think the Drunk Deer does better? Well, in the same realm of the form factor, I think a 75 is far more appealing to someone who may have been used to a TKL or full size and don't want to take that immediate jump to a 60%. Games like certain RPGs, don't judge me. The require the function row will also really benefit from this form factor while retaining the functionality of the Hall Effect switches. Form factor is also more appropriate for those who want to work during the day but game at night, being able to easily switch actuation points with the click of a button once they clock out of work for the day. The two most important benefits I see here, however, are one, the price and two, the fact this is an in-stock product. Coming in at $130 for the version including the keycaps, the board is a whole $50 cheaper than the Wooting for more keys and a knob. At the time of recording, the turnaround time for the Wooting seems to be just under a month, so it depends how patient you are, right? The only other in-stock options, as I mentioned, are the Steel Series boards, which carry a far higher price point, and if you want to explore the keyboard hobby in terms of modifications, this keyboard will be far more restrictive than either the Wooting or the Drunk Deer. I had mixed expectations when I came into this review, and with all the hype around Hall Effect Switches at the moment, I was really impressed with their functionality. As someone who doesn't really game that much, my Genshin addiction doesn't count. I know that I'd never be able to get the most out of what the board offers. Given how how much praise the Wooting has gained within the gaming community, I don't think that this will be the last product we see coming to market with these features, and it's great to see more products coming in that bridge the gap between the gaming and the enthusiast communities. But I do hope that future products take this one step further, offering aluminium cases and better quality keycaps. But I might be alone in this, I don't know, let me know in the comments. So all that said, what are my final thoughts? Drunk Deer A75 sits itself quite nicely on the cusp of an enthusiast for consumers who predominantly want a keyboard for gaming, 
and like the idea of Hall Effect switches, but don't want to wait for the Wooting to deliver, and on top of this, don't want to pay the extra money that you would otherwise have to to pick up one of the Apex line boards from SteelSeries. The nature of the boards included foam and pre-lube stabs all point towards this being a keyboard for those who are at least interested in mechanical keyboards in the hobby, and like the Wooting provides a nice platform for basic modifications. What the drunk deal lacks in this aspect is being held within a 75% form factor that isn't as easily accessible as the 60% tray mount design of the Wooting. Overall, I was impressed with the functionality of the drunk deal, and if you like the Wooting but don't like waiting, or you prefer a form factor that sits a little close to the TKL or full size that you've been using for a while, then I think this is a pretty nice option to consider. That being said, I'm sure these won't be the last keyboards to have the option of Hall Effect switches. I'm interested to see where this little pocket of the hobby takes us next. Now, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. A little different from normal, I know, so do let me know if you like this kind of thing and want to see more of it. We're back to history lessons from next week, I promise. And do let me know your thoughts on the keyboard and the Hall Effect switches in the hobby in general. Thanks for watching, socials are all down below, and as always, I'll see you nerds in the next one. Peace.